That's the toe of the glacier. I cannot believe we're walking on a glacier. That's absolutely gorgeous. Wow. If you are afraid of heights, this may not be the best stopover. Come on, Kaylin. You got this. The decision, of course, is ours to make. Travel beyond this point is not recommended. No turning back now. On our last episode, we showed you why we think Valdez might be Alaska's best kept secret, from the wildlife to the glacier viewing to the food. And today we're back on the road with a tough decision to make. Why are we risking our home on wheels for another Alaskan adventure? Keep watching to find out. Welcome to the New States Go North. We're Howard and Caitlin New State, dog people, food people, adventure people. We've been living on the road for the past three years, traveling through North America and beyond. This summer, we've been sharing our journey across the last frontier with you. From the Kenai Peninsula to the interior of Alaska, come along as we show you why the 49th state should be a must visit on your list. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. I got my belt. I got a flashlight. I got everything I need. <laughs> I'm not sure if we'll need either of those things for what we're doing today. But we are walking over to the footbridge to head into McCarthy to go meet our guide for... No, don't t don't say anything yet. <laughs> Caitlin, we've kept the secret this long. <laughs> All right, we'll tell you soon. Okay, we made it across the one and only footbridge in order to get over to McCarthy. However, you are probably wondering, how do the cars get over on this side that are gonna pick us up in a minute? And the answer is, there's a local bridge, but you have to be a local and you have to have, I guess, some type of a pass in order to even get onto that other bridge. But there is a bridge that you can drive across. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. We're going on a half day hike with Kennecott Wilderness Guides, and we're going out to the Root Glacier, and we're gonna get on the glacier. I'm so excited. Okay, to give you guys all a lay of the land. So we're in Kennecott right now. Kennecott is a couple of miles away from McCarthy. Now you can hike from where we are camped all the way up to Kennecott, or you can cross the bridge, pick up a shuttle, there are $5 shuttles, or if you're doing a, a pre-scheduled hike or you have a tour or something like that, they'll actually pick you up at the footbridge and then take you all the way up to Kennecott. Okay, that's great and all, but let's back way up to how you even get to McCarthy in the first place, because the journey here is half the adventure. Okay, then we are in the town of Chitna, which is 60 miles from McCarthy. The road to McCarthy, the first part of it, which we were just on, is paved, and I'm gonna use some air quotes because it starts to get a little bit dicey towards the end, but the whole rest of it is all dirt and gravel. So we have a decision to make. Are we gonna drive all the way in with the RV or are we going to unhook and drive in with the CRV? It is a big decision because we have to be in McCarthy at 9 a.m. Let's go check in first. There's a ranger station here with uh, National Park Service rangers and we can check in with them. All right, well, that was very inconclusive. Hmm. I, I feel like Ranger Vicky- Very gave nice. Us, very nice, gave us a lot to chew on and the decision, of course, is ours to make. In 2019, I'll tell you, we did not. Uh, we actually only drove about a couple miles in, and there's a free campground. It's run by the state of Alaska. And uh, we stayed there, and it was very nice. And then we drove, uh, at the time, our Hyundai SUV in. She doesn't know about us. We're extreme RVers. I keep trying to tell Caitlin, I'm like, that's not a thing to be an extreme RVer. I'm gonna make it a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I also feel like extreme is a bit extreme. Maybe we're like ultimate RVers. I can get around like being the ultimate RVers. Like we 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 are the ultimate. I just feel like extreme sounds more badass. <laughs> extreme. Okay, so we're here right now. And if we choose adventure option number one, we'll be driving all the way here on gravel to here. Or option number two on Choose Your Own Adventure New State Nomads Edition is we would stay here at the Copper River Campground, get up at the crack of dawn, drive the CRV in, do what we're doing tomorrow, and then drive the CRV back out. <laughs> it's three o'clock right now, so we have plenty of daylight still. That's not a problem. It's just a dirt road. It's not like it's, it's some crazy road. It's just a dirt road. Uh, that they grade twice a year. So um, granted, it's not like a paved road, but 
You're not talking about like the worst road in the world, and if you take it slow, you'll be fine. They actually advise, it says plan on three to four hours to cover the 60 miles of dirt road. That to me sounds pretty decent. I think we should do it. You guys are our witness. Um, Caitlin says... <laughs> oh, don't put it on me. Caitlin says we should do it. Okay, we're doing it. We're doing it. All right, folks, here's the following morning for everyone who is in this RV. It's going to get bumpy, okay? Some stuff's gonna, probably going to fall, okay? So we're just going to need to be careful, and we're going to need to ignore a whole bunch of noise. <laughs> Scout, what? Scout is already protesting. No turning back now. Uh, as Samuel L. Jackson once said in Jurassic Park, Hold on to your butts. Proper outdoor gear and clothing, a spare tire and adequate jack, and a strong sense of adventure. The McCarthy Road provides for friendly. Travel beyond this point is not recommended, except for ultimate RVers. So these paved parts are meant to lull you into a false sense of security because this hasn't been repaved in a long time. And so there are huge potholes and then the paving stops and it goes back into a washboard and dirt and rock. It's been very bumpy so far. Yeah, checking in, uh, support we've driven eight miles, and <laughs> I don't think it's really been that bad. It's taken almost 30 minutes to go eight miles. Caitlin, do you want to go under the bridge? <laughs> All right, it is 5.16. We've been driving for about 45 minutes. We're going to stop to see if we can get to the catwalk under that bridge. So back in the day, that single lane bridge didn't even used to have guardrails. And it's what, over 200 feet straight down to the river? If you are afraid of heights, this may not be the best stopover. And he's making his wife, who is afraid of heights, do it. You'll be fine. I guess this little pathway <laughs> is the trail. It's just a, it's just a catwalk. It's a catwalk with safety. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going up the rickety ladder onto the concrete. We're going to climb up that. Once we get on top of that part right there, you step down and onto the onto the walkway. <laughs> you just deducted all that by walking up here. Oh my god. Or let's yeah. go right under here. Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, much easier. <laughs> oh my god, rickety indeed. <laughs> What's the problem, Caitlin? <gasps> okay, so now we're gonna go under. Oh. Turn around, stand up. There you go. Okay. Just put your foot. Yep. Piece of cake. Okay, your turn. This is beautiful. Okay, so we're getting ready to go to the part of the catwalk where we leave the land and we're over the massive gorge. You can hear the water rushing. I might just stay here. Uh, I don't like this. Oh my God, do you see it? Look at that. Come on, Kaylin. You got this. Just walk. Just walk. There you go. Being very brave. Just look at me. Just look at me. You good. Why don't you tell the nice people how safe and secure this platform is? I'm going to speak to something I don't believe. We are 238 feet above the river. Come on, Kaylin. This is a very proud moment. <laughs> Kaylin has overcome her fear and is right now on a catwalk underneath a bridge, 238 feet off the ground. 
Please don't ask me to like let me jump off of it or anything. Don't worry. <laughs> Not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> Gorgeous. Gorgeous. <laughs> Gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> this wooden structure behind us, as incredible as it sounds, was completed in only eight days when the average temperature was negative, are you ready? 67, negative 67 degrees Fahrenheit. Can you imagine how cold that is? I just feel like you would get frostbite immediately working in those conditions. Like, how's that even possible? I really have no idea. I'm also just thinking about from the, the time, because we're talking about, you know, this is hundred years ago, the idea that they would be able to weather that type of condition and build. I mean, those are some seriously hardy carpenters. I might have scratched the RV. Sorry. I think it'll be all right. All right, come on, Scout. Plan to stay. There are two very obvious no camping signs. Actually, okay, so there's two big blue ones, then another one that says no overnight parking, and then another one that says day use only. So I'm pretty sure we can't stay here. <laughs> Well, uh, the signs look brand new. Yeah. So I'm guessing maybe in the past you could. But the good news is we still have cell service. Mm -hmm. So let's figure out maybe. Yep. All right, now it is time to eat because that was a very long drive, but it was definitely worth it for these views. Wow. So we ended up just coming to the end of the road and uh, staying at the pay campground. It's $25 a night, but there are incredible views. You have either our views of a river or views of the glacier. So I think that the drive was definitely worth it. Would you say so, Howard? Oh, definitely. So this is perfect and we'll be able to walk right to it. We're gonna make some quesadillas and get some sleep for our big adventure tomorrow. Have you guys worn crampons before? No. <laughs> awesome. First cool. Time ever. This is exciting. And we're just going to do sizing right now, and we'll go over how to actually put them on when we get out to the glacier. Try to get that heel back as far as possible, and that looks great. Awesome. I'll have you step out from there. So before the trip, we got an excellent packing guide with all kinds of different things that you want to make sure that you bring. If you don't have something, don't worry. Chances are they might have an extra that you can use. Like they just brought me a much bigger pack that I can use because you do have to put your crampons into your bag. So just something to take note. I didn't have any room in mind, so we're gonna transition into this one. We are going to be walking on a trail that's about two and a half miles out to the glacier. Boulders this big are extremely rare because as glaciers ground down the mountain, it breaks everything down below it. So for this to be on top of the glacier, basically it fell off from above, landed on the glacier, got pulled down by the glacier because it acts like a river, and then deposited here off the side. What we're looking at right now is about 80% ice and about 20% till on top of it. So it is majority ice out there. The views that we're already getting are absolutely incredible and you can start to see the mountains and the glacier come into sight. From here, we are going to start going down onto the lateral moraine. It will get a little bit steeper. You really gotta watch your step because the footing starts to get a little bit dicey. And of course, I'm talking to you <laughs> as I'm supposed to be focusing on my feet. I'm focusing real hard. Yeah, there's like that loose rock and so it just becomes really slippery. Wow, this is just so gorgeous. Like, I've taken a million pictures already. By the way, you can do this hike yourself. You don't need a guide. Um, but I would highly, highly recommend a guide, yeah. particularly if you're gonna go up onto the glacier itself. Yeah, I don't think I'd feel comfortable doing it without a guide because they know the safe places to be and they can explain more about the area, the topography, the nature, everything that you're seeing. For this next section, it is basically what we've been walking down already, but much more loose rock. I'm gonna go down in front and then basically just step off to the side to give hands to people who would like it on their way down. 
Right, we've made it to the toe of the glacier, so we're taking a break to put our crampons on, put another layer on, and also eat a snack, which I'm gonna eat my whole sandwich right now. It's kind of hard to believe, but that right there, that's the glacier. That's the toe of the glacier. Crampons are really awkward to walk on, on ice and especially on rocks. So we want to make sure that we're not doing any more than we absolutely have to. All right, Caitlin, you can do it. <laughs> Very challenging. <laughs> I cannot believe we're walking on a glacier. It's very important, you must have gloves on this tour. And it's not so much because of the cold. I mean, you did feel the temperature drop, but it's to protect your hands in case you fall. The surface of this is actually really sharp. It is a receding glacier. It's about 500 to 1,000 feet from the top of the glacier to the bottom of the glacier. Okay, the glacier has now increased the difficulty level to maybe like a four or a five, because we're starting to get a sensation of like divots in the glacier ice. And you're starting to see the blue Oh, yeah. I see a lot of blue over I there, Caitlin. <laughs> Beautiful, look at all the lines. That's absolutely gorgeous. Wow. It is a hole or a pipe that starts on the top of the glacier, goes all the way down to the bottom of the glacier. You're able to see the waterfall here, and then uh, the larger stream over here that leads straight down into the hole there. You have a little waterfall coming down right into this section. And then this is the main stream that actually created this Mulan. It's stunning, yes. Also terrifying. Yes, <laughs> completely. Oh man. Here we go. Glacier water. Not the glacier brand water, actual <laughs> glacier water. It's very exciting. Fresh as you will find. Would you like me to do it? Would you like me to do it? It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> Ice cold. Mm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. It's also from thousands of years old, right? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. For all of the so fresh. Meat. Like almost speechless just walking on something that incredible is just like once in a lifetime well it, and it, it's moving right like this is continuously shifting yeah, and changing the cracking and all of that we definitely learned what to and what not to step on so that's an important part of this too yeah our guide becca is awesome all right shall we uh, start the hike back all right let's do it they're ahead of us It is a beautiful day today. <laughs> it has been pouring down rain all day. And we stayed here an extra day so that we could go back into Kennecott and give you a tour of the historic mine. But that's not gonna happen. <laughs> so instead, we realized we have a lot of footage from 2019 when we were here before. Now this is before the vlog, so we would like to present to you what it looked like when we would film before we knew that we were gonna have a vlog. The story of Kennecott dates back to the Bonanza discovery in 1900 of 70% pure copper ore, one of the richest copper deposits ever found. With the remoteness of the site, however, a mining engineer named Stephen Birch brought together the Havemeyer family, J.P. Morgan, and the Guggenheim family to form the Alaska Syndicate, a wealthy trio capable of financing a four-year construction project to build the mine, the mill, and the railroad needed to connect Kennecott with the outside world. Kennecott proved enormously successful, processing almost $200 million worth of copper between 1911 and 1938. At its peak, 300 people worked in the mines, with another 300 working in the mill town, which included a general store, school, post office, power plant, recreation hall, and even a skating rink. The experience today is a step back in time. Through ongoing restoration by the National Park Service since acquiring many of the significant buildings in 1998 and exhibits spanning topics including the mining process and daily life, Kennecott Mines National Historic Landmark is a fascinating look at the important industry of mining in Alaska's history. There are only two more episodes left in our New States Go North Alaska series. Next week, we're heading to one of our all-time favorite places here in Alaska. We are heading to Chena Hot Springs. And there's so much more than just hot springs there. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming Alaskan adventures. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.